Lord, like you, we praise you. We pray, <coughs> Father, we thank you. We know that everybody is preparing to come, open their ways wherever they are stuck. There are all the obstacles, so people can come and worship you and give you thanks and praise you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Um, good afternoon, everyone. I've just contacted uh, Brother Edward. He says he's in a noisy place. I'm sure when he gets to a better place, he will lead us. I was also being kept in the waiting room. I was wondering why I couldn't come in. But we are going to start. We thank God that everyone who is here <clears throat> is a lover of Israel or is a student of Israel. There must be something on your heart which you can raise before God in prayer. There must be um, a testimony, a word of encouragement. Uh, as we have been watching the events, and I'll still ask Uncle, bless you, because he follows Israel very well. Uh, to start us off, if it is a prayer burden or if it is a, a thanksgiving, can you in a nutshell say it and then we begin from there? You can unmute yourself. And further, we want to glorify and give you thanks as we focus at the beginning of this fellowship on it. We want to thank you for the state of Israel and what is happening around this neighborhood. I want to thank you, Lord, for sharing, for making the, the scriptures come to pass, come real in our time. We want to thank you, Lord, for the people who are praying. Yesterday there was a prayer for all nations. We want to thank you for the battles we are fighting, especially in the in Gaza and in the settlement area. We want to thank you for the security and protection you are giving to the people who live in the Holy Land and those who have visited the place or throughout this period. We want to thank you, Lord, because you have protected the Holy Land and the, and the Jewish people uh, from what is going on in the middle of the especially the taking which is going on in Syria, in Turkey, and the neighboring country. You know, Lord, we have a bad day for you. Because you have committed, you have commissioned us to pray and remember in the, in the, the, the Jerusalem, the people who live there and the people who visit the place. And we are being guided by the Holy Spirit, by the scriptures. They are reminding me about Psalms 9. Said all the nations, all the nations, the wicked nations are being punished, and the people, the leaders will perish. You continue, Lord, to plead and ask for mercy. Be merciful to the people who live in, the, in Israel and the, the neighborhood. And also, Lord, we pray for mercy in the, in, the, in, the, in the sheep nations, the nations like Uganda, people who have committed all the time to pray and intercede and try to inquire from you what is exactly happening today in Israel. Whatever is happening today around our, in Israel in our time is to, for us to understand that the scriptures now have come, have come true. That people must know that the Bible was written and have risen up to the, the, the tribe of priests, people who offer priests, who offer sacrifices acceptable to you. And that's why for the whole shakeup which is happening on, even the sins which are being revealed now in the world is because the Lord of this nation of Israel. We pray that the Lord people in Israel will also will be connected with us, the intercessors for Uganda, intercessors for Africa, and all altars of prayer all over the world. Father, we pray for that the ministry will continue, the ministry of evangelizing the whole world, discipling the, uh, the discipling the, uh, discipling the uh, and commissioning those who are being sent on your uh, mission that will be controlled and connected from Israel. Father, I present myself that I'm not worthy to know much, 
Amen. For everybody around me, I pray that the Lord have mercy upon me, have mercy on the people who are listening on this show, on this platform, that many people have that deep insight and understanding that you are the God Almighty, the God of see where your name must be glorified by all nations of this world. Father, I thank you. I give you thanks. I worship you. I pray that, Lord, we are connected together, individually, cooperatively, at the, the national level. Your word must come out clearly, Lord, with those who are going to minister today. At the center of everything, you should remember this nation of Israel and the people who live in the city of Jerusalem. May there be peace in Israel. May there be peace in Jerusalem. May there be a peace for all those who are standing at this particular hour. I pray the believing that, Lord, we shall hear more from you as you talk to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. And God bless you for setting us um, two issues. Uh, Edward has posted one. I've sent the link. Um, and then the one for me, what has been on my heart, where, where I've been bleeding, uh, the Jews who are being killed in Jerusalem just because they are Jews. The various, uh, I mean, murders and this violence, which is meted on innocent people just because they are Jews. Um, the first two bo uh, brothers, they were crossing a region in Samaria and they were killed. It was so painful. Then there was another one also who was also killed. Um, it appeared in the news. Um, before I'm going to call Laura to explain to us more about the issue in South Africa, that one is a political or a governance issue. Uh, we want to bring a lamentation, a cry of pain over the Jews who continue to die. Jesus died, they died before, but they are still dying just because of their tribe being associated with Jesus. Let us go to Isaiah 40, 40. I don't know whether Emma, you are able to project. Isaiah 40, uh, bringing a word of hope because it is so discouraging when you see people dying. Um, Isaiah 40 from verse one, um, let's see. Verse one to verse six. Um, oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Okay. Isaac, you can go ahead and read it. And then we are going to pour out our hearts of pains. Like when you go to visit somebody who has lost a relative or a friend, there is a way you express that pain, you share in the pain. So let us share in this pain and bring words of hope. Here my, 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 my headline says, words of hope. In spite of death, there is always a word of hope which comes. So let us take this as our first prayer. Isaac, you can read for us. From verse one to the end. By the way, it's, um, no, let's do up to verse six. Okay. Isaiah chapter 40, verse one. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and call out to her that her time of compulsory service in warfare is finished, that her wickedness has been taken away since her punishment is sufficient, that she has received from the Lord's hand double punishment for all her sins. A voice of one calling out, Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Remove the obstacles. Make straight and smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised and every mountain and hill made low. And let the rough ground become a plain and the rugged places a broad valley. And the glory and majesty and splendor of the Lord will be revealed and all humanity shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. A voice says, call out 
prophesy. Then he answered, what shall I call out? The voice answered, all humanity is as frail as grass and all that makes it attractive, its charm and its loveliness is momentary like the flower of the field. Thank you. So let us, let us bring a cry of pain. Then after that, we speak words of hope. These words we speak in the realm of the spirit will reach every heart weeping right now among the Jews, those in the diaspora and those on the, on the land in Israel. Can you unmute? Let's give this two minutes. Uh, we cry out, we share the pain, and then we speak words of comfort. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we come before Jesus, you. Jesus, and we humble ourselves before you. Right. A cry of comfort, of comfort. We bring comfort to your children right now for all that they have gone through because of their own salvation of God. From the time they were children of the nation of God. We comfort you. We have responded. We comfort them in this difficult time. We comfort them in this pain of the loss of human life. We send what will comfort to every Israel, those who are outside of Israel. We send words of comfort. We comfort them of that. We comfort you because you have instructed us. We bring a word of encouragement to them, of God. Yes, we are telling them that they have suffered long enough. They have suffered long enough. Israel, Jews, you have su suffered long enough. You have suffered long enough. And your sins are now forgiven. We bring this word of hope um, to you, Israel. To you, the Jews. To you, the brothers of the Lord. That you have suffered today. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Forgive it. Your sin. You have paid your punishment. Paid your punishment. Sin is forgiven. We send this word. We activate and begin real in Israel among the Jews in their in their congregations. We send a word of hope. In spite of what is happening. There they will see hope. They will see hope. We see hope. We see hope. We speak. Fly up. We fly up. We turn in the world. Prepare for the Messiah. Prepare a road for the Lord. Prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Your Messiah is here. Prepare for the Messiah. Prepare in the wilderness of quality. In the wilderness of the economy. Yeah. In the wilderness of the social life, in the wilderness of the world politics, prepare for the Messiah. For your Messiah is coming. Clear the way, clear the way in the desert, in the desert places of your heart, in all the abandoned places. Prepare the way, clear the way for our God. We declare to you every valley will be laid. Every mountain, every mountain will become a plain. All those forms of the life, the, the depression, the suffering, the Lord, the Messiah will fill them with hope. The Messiah will fill them with hope. The Messiah will fill them with hope. Them with hope. We speak this word because it is the Bible which has said. He has a way to fill the valley, level the mountains, let them let the hills become plain, let the rough country be made smooth, smoothen your heart, smoothen your heart to receive the Messiah, smoothen your heart, smoothen everything in this.
this nation to receive the Messiah in the name of Jesus. We declare that then when you do this, then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Let the glory of the Lord be revealed over the whole human race. Yes, we cry out, we proclaim a message of hope. We proclaim a message of hope that your Messiah is coming. Your Messiah is here. Open your eyes. Thank you. Let me ask Uncle Jairus to wind that prayer. To, to, to bring to pray a prayer of corporate prayer. And then I'll ask Sister Laura, 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 uh, then you lead us in that the issues of Israel versus South Africa. Lord our Father, we want to thank you because Israel is your firstborn. Israel is the oldest nation on this globe, oh Lord. Many nations have come and have gone. Father, because of you, they hate Israel. Because of the church, they hate Israel. And Lord, we want to comfort Israel. Lord, your word says, comfort my people. Comfort Jerusalem. Comfort uh, says the Lord, speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, Lord God. We pray that this warfare, this massless in, uh, killing, the killing outside of the law, Lord, extrajudicial murders, oh Lord God, violence, suicide murders against Israel, because Jewish people, because they are Jews, oh Lord God. We bring repentance for the way nations are behaving. Nations' eyes are blinded. They don't know your plan for Israel. Father, may you constantly open the eyes of the nations, of the Gentiles, to see the place of Israel. Lord, without Israel, the Gentiles cannot prosper. Without Israel, the Gentiles cannot be saved. It is first the Jew, then the Gentile. Lord, we bring repentance, even those nations that are legislating against Israel. The other day we saw in the AAU how they, they did not, they sent out the representative, Lord God, from Israel, Lord God. Father, we, we repent of all those things right here on this continent, which uh, is blessed because of Israel, Lord God. Father, where you have put uh, resources to bless Israel. Where through Abraham, this continent has been blessed. Father, there are men and women that have taken the, the position of leadership and they are militating against you, our Lord, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father, for that Israel will, will, will receive mercy. It will, re it will receive your double. It has really received double for their sins, O oh Lord God. We therefore pray that it will be a time for restoration. Lord, that your glory will be revealed upon Israel. Lord, that you, you, those valleys will be exalted, Lord God. The mountains will be brought low, Father. Those who raise themselves up against Israel. Lord, those voices that they will be brought down, Lord God. And the ones that are in the valley, who are without speech, oh Lord God, they will be lifted up, oh God. They will be, they will be brought up to the place where the crooked places will be straightened, oh Father. We pray that you will open the eyes of the Jews, the Jewish people, to see and recognize their Messiah, Lord God, to come to you because you are the one that redeems them, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Father, your word says you bring good, oh Zion, you bring good tidings. It is from the mountains of Zion that we get good tidings. May those good tidings be given free access. Lord, you know, to the continent of Africa, we will develop and other nations that understand the place of Israel. They will develop because of their relationship with the, uh, uh, the covenant and the promise to Abraham. Lord, may we connect with that promise. May we connect with you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Lorraine uh, to give us 
to give us a brief before we go to pray. Uh, Laura, sorry, not Noreen. You know, my call you good Noreen. Yeah, good, good afternoon, family. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, this morning we woke up to find out that one of the Islamic parties in parliament is pushing a motion this afternoon to to lobby the other uh, minority groups to vote in favor of um, of Israel being downgraded the democ the, the diplomatic relations with Israel. Now the previous uh, gentlemen who prayed prayed against what happened at the AU. South Africa is always at the forefront of trying to get Israel kicked out of um, the AU observer status. They always push in the agenda that Israel is an apartheid state. But what is concerning is the eclipse in South Africa turns a blind eye. You have senior people who say they belong to the body of Christ who actually are punting the, the anti-Israeli agenda. The biggest, um, I suppose the biggest golden mile in the continent, um, Johannesburg is now run by an executive mayor who's Islam. So the first day in office, he was already pushing for the Palestines and everyone to come into the country. So I'm just asking, as I stand out as a watchman of the walls of Israel in South Africa, that we lift up a prayer that today, today, that God will enforce his manifestation, that the Son of God came, Al Gabo. Al Gabo, we call upon you this afternoon, Father God, that you came, Son of God, for the manifestation to destroy the works of the devil. I ask, mm -hmm. Father God, that whatever plans and agendas, fiery arrows are being plotted against Israel in Parliament today, Father God Almighty, I ask that, Father, from Archangel Michael's camp, mm -hmm. you will dispatch angels of fire, Father God, that it shall not stand and it shall not prosper. Lord, we have been praying, Father, asking you to bring conviction to the minister, to officials, Father, but it seems to be getting worse. I ask that today, Father God, South Africa will respect your your plans and purposes for Israel. I plead and I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over Parliament and Father God. Let the Christian party's voice be heard today. We cry for mercy to forgive your ecclesi, Father. We have been sleeping and Father God, we are seeing our ministers, our senior government officials officially wearing the scarves of Palestine to government meetings officially, Father God, it has been proven that the halal industry um, economy of South Africa is the biggest in the world. Father God Almighty, help us as your ecclesi, Father God, that your kingdom come and your will be done concerning the relations between South Africa and Israel. In Yeshua's name, we have prayed in agreement. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Laura. Sister Laura is calling Amen. from Africa, from Pretoria. And um, we are going to respond. I'm going to ask Brother Isaac to, to display Psalm 83. Again, we are going to bring a lamentation. Now, when, when we finish uh, declaring that psalm, these are two countries that we need at stake, we need to pray for. South Africa represents the continent of Africa. Remember, I have been told many times how Africa enslaved Israel. Now, again, we are downgrading, downgrading Israel like. They want to remove the ties. They want to remove, it's like we are proposing to remove the, 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 what, the, the diplomatic ties with Israel. So we have to pray for us, ourselves as a continent uh, coming against Israel. 
remember uh, Genesis 12 that I'll cast those who cast him. And then we have to pray also for Israel. We are not praying against people, but we are praying against, as Sister Laura was sharing, it's very clear the spirit of Islam is rising through South Africa in order to bring controversy on the continent. So when we finish declaring Psalm 83, I'll ask various people to respond in prayer. You can actually raise your hand by the icon so that there is order in the house. But let us give it some five minutes of intercession together. Then after that, we respond. Isaac, are you ready? Yes. Um, again, read for us and then we shall pray. Psalm 83. Mm -hmm. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace or be still, O God. For behold, your enemies are in tumult, and those who hate you have raised their heads in hatred of you. They concoct crafty schemes against your people and conspire together against your hidden and precious ones. They have said, come, let us wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. For they have conspired together with one mind against you, they make a covenant. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, of Moab and the Hagrites, Gibal and Ammon and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot, that is the Ammonites and the Moabites, and have been an arm of strength to them, Selah. Deal with them as you did with Midian as with Sisera and Jabin at the brook of Kishon. You were destroyed, who were destroyed at Edendor, excuse me, who became like dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zib and all their princes like Ziba and Zalmuna, who said, let us possess for ourselves the pastures of God. Oh my God. Make them like whirling dust, like chaff before the wind, worthless and without substance. Like fire comes and the forest, like fire consumes the forest, sorry. And like the flame sets the mountains on fire. So pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with the violence of your storm. Fill their faces with shame and disgrace that they may persistently seek your name O oh Lord, let them be ashamed and dismayed forever. Yes, let them be humiliated and perish, that they may know that you alone, whose name is the Lord, are the most high over all the earth. Amen. Amen. Let's take two minutes of prayer together, corporate prayer. Then after that, I'll ask people to come out and express their, pour out their hearts in prayer over this issue of South Africa. But you take a maximum of one, hour, one minute so that you mind others who also want to pray. Let us unmute and pray. Father, we continue to call upon you that you, you will not keep in the environment of South Africa, when we see the Lord, as they do as they do as they are in revolt, and those who hate you are rebelling. 
Look how they are rebelling. People who are sent in parliament make decisions. They are now making contrary decisions against people. How they are in the Look at how they are making secret plans against people. Look at how they are voting against those people. It's all about me that you look and see what is happening in the You said in your word that your eyes are moving to and fro to see those who stayed on this so that you may strengthen them. Look at the intercessors and in South Africa and strengthen them. Oh, Jesus, look at how those who said you are bring up a plan to do the most diplomatic type in Israel, oh God. Look at their alliances. Lord, their, their, their alliances are against you. Oh, Jesus, we call up. We call up. Look at them. They are conglomerates. How they have organized themselves as a group. We call upon you. We call upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We are going to do corporate prayer. So um, you can raise your hand and pray, and then others will follow. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Anybody can start who wants to start. Mm -hmm. And Ruth Mutebe, you are unmuted, so can you begin us off? Mm -hmm. Lord, we want to thank you for this time, oh God. We thank you for the nation of Israel, your chosen people, God, mm -hmm. that are your heart beat, oh King of glory. Lord, this morning, this afternoon, we come before you, Lord, as we represent Africa, Lord, even as we hear what is happening in South Africa the desire to wipe out, Lord God, your name, Lord God, to break every relation, Lord God, with Israel. Lord, this is not right, O King of glory, for the sake of your children, of the intercessors, O God, the church, Lord, in South Africa. Lord, we plead with you, O God, that you will forgive us, O God, for such an evil thought, for such an agenda, O God, May you have mercy upon us, O King of glory, that such an evil Lord God will, will come to a, a stop, O God. Lord, your word tells us, O God, you are ready, Lord God, to deal with such kind of people, to cover their face with shame, O God. Lord God, to wipe them out, O God, that they may know, Lord God, you are alone, you are God. Lord, you are ready, Lord God, to do to bring judgment upon them. But we plead with you, Lord, for the sake of your people, that you'll have mercy upon South Africa. You'll have mercy upon us as Africans, oh God. Lord, we pray that Israel, Lord God, will be upheld, Lord God, with mercy, with love, with grace, O King of glory. Lord, we shall pray, Lord God, for Israel. We shall desire, Lord God, to team up with Israel to love Israel, to pray for Israel, because you promised the Lord you bless those who bless your people. Lord, we pray that your nation, oh God, will be upheld, oh God, with honor, with grace, oh God, with humility, oh King of glory. We shall call upon your name for your people. Lord, may you remember us, oh God, with mercy. May you remember us. May you wipe away our deepest need, O King of glory, which we, we ourselves we may not know. May you remember us, O God. May you remember South Africa, O God. Lord, we thank you for this afternoon that you hear us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Uncle Benon. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bring this petition before you. 
Lord, you declared that Israel is an apple of your eye, and those that touch, touch her, they touch the apple of your eye. Lord, we pray that you will not be silent, that, Lord, you will even kindle your anger against those people that have been raised to a place of influence to positions of power and want to use it to touch the apple of your eye. Lord, I pray that even suddenly they will be brought low. Those who have been raised to high positions and want to use them to harm and to sabotage you, people want to do evil. Lord, we call upon your name that such people will not stand and they will lose their positions of power. They will lose their positions of influence. Like you shut the mouth of lions for Daniel, you also shut their mouths. They will no longer have the voices that of influence. Lord, we pray that you will not be quiet. Lord, we pray that you will act so speedily. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Lord, you are you are enthroned on your throne in heaven, and you reign among nations. We want to pray for South Africa that the leadership in opposition of what you have what you have decreed to take place in our time for Israel. You touch their hearts and soften their hearts to know the truth. My prayer is that let them come out of darkness because the light of your light is shining in the nations. And Lord, I pray that your word may come to pass as we have heard that the Lord, you on the side of those who are being persecuted. You help those who are upright and you judge those who are wicked. May you deal with any wickedness among the nations, especially those who are resilient, disobedient, and not following the, the, the sequence, the, the things which are happening in this, in this season. Lord, I pray that you have mercy and you have compassion to those who are undergoing through pain and suffering because you are bringing judgment to the nations of the world, especially those who are prepared to be obedient and to listen to the instructions you have given through generations for your kingdom to come. My prayer is, Lord, in this particular time, may your kingdom come. Let your will be done here on earth that it is in heaven. And I pray that, Lord, you prompt the church in the world to read the scriptures, Give us the word, give us this to understand this mystery. Why the world is so disturbed, why there are so many earthquakes, why there are so many epidemics, why there are so many battles and shifting, shakings which is taking place in different parts of the world. You are doing all this so that people can turn back to you and pray for Israel and the city of Jerusalem. But I know. Here in Uganda, at this particular hour, for the word to say that those who fear the Lord talk to each other, and Lord, you hear and listen to them. I pray that the Lord you put up on the leaders of the world that this is the give them the discerning spirit, so they should be able to separate what is right and wrong. This will only happen when we listen to your voice. I pray that the Lord you speak. To us individually, cooperatively, even to the leaders, even Uganda in particular, talk to our leaders, talk to them, expose all sins, especially in this season, which is hindering people, whatever is hidden in darkness, bring it up to light. Great believing that, Lord, you have heard us prayer, our prayers, and you accept it as our sacrifice for this day, the third, second day of March. 2023. In the name of Jesus, I pray. 
Amen. Amen. Uh, anybody with a burden? Uh, we have we exhausted. Let me ask our chairman to lead us also in a prayer. Uh, Mr. Simwe, uh, bring power out your heart in matters concerning Israel and the continent of Africa. Lord, we, we thank you for the opportunity to stand for the nation of Israel. Uh, mm -hmm. The people after your own heart, a nation that you have chosen for yourself to give us um, the Messiah you chose them to give us. The prophets, you chose them to give us, he says, you chose them to give us the covenant. And here we are, Lord, enjoying all these things. And yet, Lord, the enemy is uh, up against them. We stand on this altar together. We are seeking your face, Lord. We are pleading the case of Israel. We notice that the enemy is up against them now, even more than before. He is marshalling all the all the stuff from everybody, from everywhere, from the UN, from, from EU, from even America, which used to stand with Israel, is now almost giving up on Israel. He is marshalling support from African Union. And we have seen what has happened, what happened in the AU recently. We have seen what nations like Algeria and, and South Africa are doing to uh, exclude Israel, not just exclude them, but also to fight to make sure that Israel does not have diplomatic ties with Africa. Lord, we bring these matters before you as, as your children, as burden, bearers as intercessors we bring the matter of israel we bring the matter of uh, of the jewish people those that have brought us the light i mean we got the light from the one who was nurtured from them we got the light from the laws that were the word of god that was written right in israel the word was written right there. It speaks of their experiences, it speaks of their pain, of their suffering. And now we are enjoying your word. And yet, Lord, your people are, are in danger. Lord, we bring these matters before you and ask that you will not be quiet. The scripture has told us in Psalm 83 that do not be silent. Do not be quiet, Lord, in times like these when the enemy is up against the people, the upper of your eye. That's what you say, Lord. Do not be silent, Lord. Arise and defend the cause of your people. Defend the cause of Israel. We thank you for what you have done so far because there is hope. And you have promised you will never let them, leave them nor forsake them. You have promised never again shall they go back into, into exile. You brought them back and you have established them for the sake of your name. It's not that they have done anything good or, or right, but for the sake of your name, for the sake of the covenant you made with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob, Israel, for the sake of the promises that you have made, the covenant you made with David, you said, I will establish your throne forever. And there is a king you promised David and Jesus came and his, his kingdom is now here. And so we notice as well that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of 
the Messiah, even once he comes back, he's going to be in Jerusalem. And so the contention. Jerusalem has been contended for by many, many in the history of, of Israel. But above all, we know that the enemy is contending for Jerusalem. And so, Lord, will you, will you arise? Will you not be silent? Will you arise and defend Israel and defend your purposes and defend your name? It's your name, Lord, at stake. It's your name that they are fighting against. It's your name that they, they want to dethrone. It's your son they, do, they want to dethrone. So, Lord Jesus, we pray that this petition gets, gets to you. That this petition, as our advocate, you pick it up and take it to the king of kings and the judge of, of judges and and the lawgiver, our God, our Father. And this petition be, be heard concerning the matter of Israel, concerning the issues that uh, are now at hand, concerning their security, their peace, concerning even their spiritual lives, because ultimately we pray that they will get to know you, the Messiah, they are king, they will get to understand, Lord, that you remove the, the veil that has been put on their faces, that they cannot understand, they cannot know that you came as their Messiah, the one they were waiting for, you came and they did not understand you, Lord. I pray that their eyes be opened to the realization that you Jesus Christ are the Messiah, is the Messiah they were waiting for, and that they, their hearts will be turned to you. Lord, remove the hardening of hearts. Lord, touch their hearts to, to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And ultimately, Lord, we know that uh, when all is done and the kingdom is established, all nations will throng to Jerusalem. They will take gifts, they will take You'll go to, 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 to worship the king right there. Lord, before that happens, preserve the nation of Israel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Uncle Robinson. Thank you for that passionate prayer. Uh, I'm going to call uh, our sister, Rita Omago, Mrs. to lead us in worship. Immediately after that, you hand over to the national coordinator, Mr. Nero. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Phoebe. Praise the Lord. Um, my name is Rita Omago, and I'm going to be leading us in, in this time, in the next five minutes. Psalm 103 verse 19 says, the Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. The Lord's kingdom rules over all the kingdoms of the earth. So we have nothing to fear. We are safe and secure in him. Amen. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are God alone, 
from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You're the only God whose power none can contend. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. And you are God, that's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's who you are, unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable. That's who you are. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your you are God alone, and right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne, you are God alone, you're unchangeable, unshakable. Unstoppable, that's what you are. Unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable, that's what you are. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are on your throne. You are God alone. Hallelujah. Lord, you are God alone. You rule and reign over the affairs of the nations. And you reign. You reign in this nation. You reign in Israel. In Jesus' name I prayed. Amen. Amen. Now I take the opportunity to invite our national coordinator, Mr. Francis Nero, to take over. Thank you very much. Indeed, Lord, you're unshakable, unchangeable, immutable, incomparable to none. Your throne is established forever and ever. Your kingdom is eternal. Your kingdom endures from one generation to another. Your glory has no boundary. You rule and reign sovereign beyond time. Times and seasons are in your hands. Great are you, O God, and greatly to be praised. 
Great are you in your kingdom, great in counsel, great in power, great in wisdom, great in authority, great in dominion. Who is there like you? There is no one. For by your word, by your mighty counsel, the mighty counsel of your word, you created all things that are sin and those that are not sin. There are things on the earth, in the heavens and things in the world below. Your word sustains them all. Your word created them all. Great are you, O God, and greatly to be praised. We give you thanks for this day that you've gathered us again in your name. We humble ourselves because you are God alone. God alone, the maker of the heavens and the earth, the creator of the ends of the earth, by whose word he stretched the heavens like a curtain and pitched them like a tent. Great are you, O God, and greatly to be praised. We thank you for this day and for the fellowship you've given us with you and with one another. Now speak to us and bring your heart and your burden to us, Lord, for we are willing to receive from you. We are willing to hear from you. And we ask for the help of the Holy Spirit that hearing we will do what you want us to do in this our day. We thank you, our Father, and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, thank you. Thank you, our sister Rita, for leading us in worship, and uh, Phoebe for guiding the prayer as we focused on Israel. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, apologies, I'm not able to use uh, my uh, video, my camera, because of where I am. So you will bear with me and let me just uh, share what is on my heart. Um, we're going to be focusing our prayer this afternoon on the seven mountains. Um, I do believe all of you, or maybe most of you, have participated in the last two weeks uh, as we went through the series on the seven mountains. And uh, many of us have been challenged again and again and again to take personal responsibility over the mountains that we sense that the Lord has called us to. <clears throat> and uh, I would like us to spend some time in prayer regarding this direction that God is giving us as a ministry, because evidently it is beginning to very actively align us to what God intended right from the beginning. I would like to pick a few excerpts from the presentation that Dr. Magara shared with us from the beginning of um, from the beginning of uh, the series, I would like to share that portion, a portion there. Um, let me get it. Just one minute. Sorry, let me let me get it. Okay. Okay, um, I don't seem to pick it. I don't seem to get it. Okay, um, ad, admin, mod, um, um, post, if you're able to get that presentation, the first one that uh, Dr. Nagara shared regarding uh, the seven mountains, I would appreciate. 
I have it, but it seems like um, it's in a version that I can't share. Now, we, I would like to begin with this portion of scripture, Genesis 1 and verse 26. Um, we are just, we, I would just like to highlight certain principles and also try to put into perspective what exactly it is that we are up against. Genesis 1, 26, we do know that God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Then he said, let them have dominion. That is it. Let them have dominion. So in God's mind was dominion. Verse 28 tells us, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every creeping thing that moves upon the earth. So first agenda in God's mind for making us is dominion. And we looked through that control, rulership, governance, management, uh, stewardship of the resources he has put on the earth uh, for our sustenance and, and, uh, and posterity and so on. We looked at all that. Now, the fall, the fall of man, of course, caused man to literally um, relegate the mandate God has given, that mandate of dominion. We gave it up to Satan. You do remember when Jesus was tempted by the same Satan, he, he, <laughs> he took him to, to, to the cleft of the rock and showed him the kingdoms of this world, the kingdoms of this world and their splendor. And he said, all these have been given to me and I give it to whomever I wish or whomever I choose if you bow down and worship me. In other words, whoever worships me, I can give him the power. I can give him the wealth. I can give him the, the re resources. I can give him the influence. I can give them anything as long as they worship me. So that becomes the principle by which the world is governed. It is either you worship God, thank you. Uh, the next slide. Either you worship God or you worship Satan. Either you worship God or worship Satan. And so Satan knows or knew then that it had been given to him the kingdoms of this world. The question is who gave? It was mankind. It was Adam. And, uh, and uh, he came to tempt Jesus who practically was Adam or the last Adam or the second Adam, as Paul would put it in 1 Corinthians 15. He came to tempt the second Adam or the last Adam. Thank God that the last Adam understood. He knew and he stood, he withstood the temptation, not like the first Adam. So that withstanding of the temptation was, gave us premise of restoration gave us premise of restoration. And, and so when you move fast forward to Genesis chapter 11, sorry, chapter three, um, of course, man fell, Adam fell, and God meted out the different aspects of judgments and, and, and uh, regarding the fall, regarding the disobedience. And in verse 15, it tells, Eve, rather he tells the serpent, he started judging with the, uh, he started judging the serpent, then came to Eve, then came to Adam. So he tells the serpent that I'm going to put enmity between you and the seed of the woman. The seed of the woman who will crush your head and you'll bruise his head. By now we all know that the seed of the woman was actually Christ. It was pointing to Christ. Now from that point on, human beings, civilizations that have formed the history of the world have had influence of Satan, but with the, with, the, with the mind of making or forming that seed of a woman or uh, uh, duplicating that seed of a woman. In chapter 11, marked the beginning of the first antichrist governance on earth the first blatant rebellion on earth led by Nimrod. And he established his kingdom 
which is called Babel, and, and many other cities which he built. You can read that in Genesis chapter 11. Now, Babel is the root word for Babylon, which actually means confusion. Now, Paul is the one who helps us understand that God is specifically not a God of confusion. Now, that Babel, when you read about Nimrod in chapter 10, it sounds, there is a, a language used there like it was a positive, it was a great, a valiant man who, who did something for the good of mankind. But in actual sense, he was rebellious against God because he had heard through the history that they had at the time that God had destroyed his ancestors by flood. And so he told his colleagues and said, let us build a tower that reaches heaven. If God brings a flood again, it's not going to get us. We will be high up there. If the flood is so much that it can get us, it will also swallow God because we will be near God. I, I saw this in the book of Jesha, you know, some of this <laughs> extra biblical information. So that was the motivation to build that tower. So it was in defiance, in rebellion against God. And so that marked the beginning of Babylon. So God, of course, confused their tongues, confused their tongues and, and scattered them abroad across the earth. Now, that scattering across the earth uh, formed all kinds of things. Please go to the next slide. Um, led to the, uh, you know, formation of, go to the next one, next one. Now you, you have that image, you have that image uh, that Nebuchadnezzar saw of the great kingdoms, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, and then down you have the kingdom of Christ. Now Babylon gets to be established and it's so powerful, so strong, so powerful, so strong. Now the principles by which Babylon was established was drawn right from Nimrod, the tower of Babel, and that is the root of Babylon. You then notice that this Babylon that instituted the first rebellion, the first blatant antichrist governance on earth is not complete. It's, it's not over, it's not yet done. It is talked about in the book of Revelation. I'll refer to that in a short while. That means every other nation, every other kingdom, every other civilization, every other you know, governance that now comes after have borrowed a leaf from Babylon. They have borrowed a leaf from Babylon. Now, I would like to read Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah chapter 51. Phoebe, I hope you're the one going to guide the prayer, Phoebe. Jeremiah chapter 51. I'm opening it just a moment. I will read verses just 25 and to 27 in the interest of time. Now, Jeremiah was in, he had prophesied for Babylon and Judah is in captivity. And now what he's doing is he's prophesying the restoration of Israel and the judgment of Babylon. So he says, behold, verse 25, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord. So Babylon is referred to as a mountain, but a mountain of destruction, a destroying mountain. Please pay keen attention on this. A destroying mountain. And then he says, which destroyeth the whole earth. There we go. How does this mountain get to destroy the whole earth? This mountain called Babylon because it has established the first blatant rebellion against God. And then it says, and I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and roll thee 
down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. Verse 26, and they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner. Please underline that word. They will not take a corner stone from you, Babylon, nor a stone for foundation. They will not take corner stones from you. They will not take foundation stones from you, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Look at this. A stone for corner, corner stone, foundation stone, corner stone, foundation stone. Now, these two words, corner stone, and foundation stone. All of them <laughs> refer to Christ. Jesus is our chief cornerstone. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. He's the chief cornerstone and we come to him as living stone. He's a living cornerstone. He's also the foundation stone. Isaiah uh, 28 verse, uh, verse 7, 16 says, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone a tested cornerstone for a sure foundation. Whoever trusts in him shall not be disappointed. Now, Jesus Christ is a foundation stone. This Babylon also gives foundation stones and cornerstones to who? To nations. So that nations are built on foundation stones or patterned after Babylon. I hope you're following me. Cornerstones, foundation stones. Now, the cornerstone that is talked about in verse 17, Isaiah 28. He says, I will use, I will make justice his measuring line, his measuring line. Now, cornerstones are used to measure the breadth and the length of a structure, of a building. Jesus, who is the foundation stone in verse 16, in verse 17 says, from him, all the measurements of the building, he, he is justice. Justice shall be his measuring line and righteousness a plummet. That is Isaiah 28, verse 17. So Jesus is a cornerstone and a foundation stone. Babylon also is <laughs> also gives cornerstones and gives foundation stones to nations to build and to structure their leadership and governance and the influence of mankind upon the same principles of Babylon. Now, I love verse 27. I love verse 27. It says, set ye up a standard in the land. I like this one. Do you remember that the scripture says, when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard. Now, this is the same thing. Set up a standard in the land. Then it says, blow the trumpet among the nations. Make an alarm. Sound an alarm among the nations. Which nations? These very nations who have got cornerstones from Babylon, who have used foundation stones from Babylon, who are built on the principles of Babylon. And then it says, prepare the nations against Babylon. I give thanks to the Lord for the movement he has begun to orchestrate within IFU and causing IFU to go in this direction because this is indeed mobilizing nations against the destroying mountain. This indeed is mobilizing nations against Babylon, whose stones have been used for cornerstones of nations, including our Uganda, whose uh, foundation uh, stones have been used to establish nations. And so he, he says, prepare, blow the trumpet, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms and name them Ararat, Mini, Ashkenaz, Appoint a captain against, against her. Cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars and so on and so forth. I will stop there. Verse 28 says, prepare against her the nations with the kings of meat, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. Now, of course, there is, there is the geopolitical dynamics of this scripture. But in actual sense, it is, it, it, it's talking about Babylon, which is mystery Babylon, which nations are supposed to be mobilized against. So Phoebe, as you guide us in prayer, we will bring thanks offering to God for, for the way he has begun mobilizing us as Ugandans. And I do believe this will go to other nations because already there are some people from other nations as well in the, in, you know, who have been going through the series of the seven mountains. Listen, 
This mobilization is with the intention of dealing with the mountain of destruction called Babylon. Let me read again Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17, I will read verses 1 to 11. Please follow with me. And the title of this chapter is The Great Prostitute and the Beast. It says, and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great war that sitteth upon many waters. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Here we go. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Please underline that, verse 5. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her, which had the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sowest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Now, when we want to understand end time, drama and the emergence of the antichrist look at this statement here verse 8 the beast that thou sowest was is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit the beast existed it died and he will come back from the dead please underline that that is classic antichrist because jesus christ was is and will come again the beast or the antichrist existed did not exist, died, and will come out of the bottomless pit. And it is this kind of resurrection that will marvel the whole world, and the whole world is going to think this is the Christ because he will have come from the place of the dead. He will have come back from the dead. And then he says he will go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. Please underline that statement again. The beast was, is not, and yet is. He lived, he died, and then he will come again. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is eternal. This one is not eternal. He was alive sometime, he died, and he will come back. You can clearly see the comparison there is anti-Christ. Verse 9. It says, and here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains. Here we go, on which the woman sits. Hallelujah. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Five are fallen. My brother, could you go back to the last slide of Babylon? If you could go back to the slide of Babylon. Here we go. Five. Persia, then there is the mid in the middle there, and then Greece, and then Rome. Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, when, when you look at this revelation, you begin to realize now that God is mobilizing us onto these mountains, it is not just an excitement. You know, some of us are here because, you know, we've had this run up to the seven mountains, this series exciting, and we can take them. Listen, it is literal engagement and warfare against the entirety of the systems of this world. That is mystery Babylon. 
and 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 when you read down in this revelation um it is said that the woman sits on many waters that is verse 1 she sits the great wall sits upon many waters look at the interpretation of the many waters in verse um verse 15 verse 15 of revelation chapter 17 and he said unto me, the waters which thou sowest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. In other words, it is not water as we know water. They are multitudes, peoples, nations, and tongues. And listen, you and I have been redeemed. Revelation 5 and verses 9 and 10. Redeemed from peoples, from nations, from tongues, from races, and brought back to God as kings and priests to reign on the earth, to reign, to restore the kingdom of God, to work with God to see his kingdom restored. And so we, brethren, we are up against the entirety of the systems of the world. Now, if I can take you back to Jeremiah 51, if you look at cornerstone, and foundation stones that are used to build nations, that are used to structure nations and the systems that govern mankind. You talk of these seven mountains, the media, education, governance, culture, uh, entertainment, celebration, and so on family, you begin to realize that for us in Africa, God has helped preserve us somehow. He has preserved one of these mountains, family. He has preserved, and somehow our cornerstone is still a, a bit intact. It is not yet so polluted. And as the cornerstone of family is not yet so polluted, so it goes down to clans and ethnicities, people groups, which is what nations are. Now you will notice that the systems of this world want to make everyone the same. All the ethnos, people groups come together under a nation called Uganda, and we are supposed to be the same. And Uganda and Ugandans are supposed to be in a global village. All of us villagers, the same people speaking the same language, doing the same things, our ways are the same. And Babylon is setting us up to actually be one nation, one people, one tongues, one ways, wicked ways, of course, and that is what is being promoted. Brethren, God has stirred us up, but we yet must understand the depth of what we are engaging with so that we do not engage <laughs> superficially. And, and this engagement will cost us a lot. It will cost us. And, and I've heard from Miles, the late Miles Munro, he said, if you're not ready to die for a cause, then you're not yet ready to follow that or pursue that cause. You notice that this war, this mystery Babylon, this mother of harlots, in her hand, there is a cup full of the blood of martyrs. She is very strategically, has been murdering and killing and murdering believers, murdering those who stand for the truth, murdering those who are of Christ. And it has not stopped. It will continue. Please take note as we engage on this mountain. There is martyrdom. Now, this is not a gospel we like to hear. There is martyrdom. If we have to touch the foundation stones, the cornerstones, which are structured nations, and you notice that nations now are, the, every nation they just seem to be going the other way, rebelling, rebelling in legislations. They want us to legislate things that are rebellious, anti-God, against God. Now, if we are not ready 
for martyrdom. This mountain, this mountain engagement will remain elusive. My prayer is that as we get excited and get inspired and get uh, to, 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 to pursue these mountains, may the Lord strengthen us because we are up against Babylon, mystery Babylon. May the Lord help us. You know, <laughs> I'm on the mountain of religion. I know a few things <laughs> that in religion, there is a lot of Babylonian principles especially in our church religious systems, very institutionalized, you know, idolatry, it is there. Institutionalized heresy is there. Institutionalized. So when we begin to come against this and, and going down to principles of doctrine and teachings and, and you know, what is called heresy, and what is not heresy, and paganism, and idolatry, and all these things, you just be ready to be either blacklisted, excommunicated from church, or called all kinds of names. And these are the prices we must be ready to pay, brethren. So I'm going to request Phoebe. Please guide us in prayer. But let me begin. Let me begin leading in prayer. <clears throat> Um, just a moment. My brother, if you could project that the next slide that talks about the promised kingdom. The next slide, thank you, that one. So this is Daniel. Now, interpreting the dream to Nebuchadnezzar, it says, as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men. <laughs> you hear this? But they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. In other words, there will be loose connection. You can see these kingdoms down here, 31st BC, you know, to 325 AD there about. There was a mix of religion and governance. There was that mingling of kingdom and spirituality. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom. His kingdom shall never be destroyed. Hallelujah. His kingdom shall never be destroyed. And so God sent this stone cut without hand. That is the foundation stone laid in Zion. That is Christ himself. Smote the image at the foot, crushed the mix of iron and clay in the Roman Empire. And that was the time Jesus was born. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Hallelujah. So I do believe we are actually in the kingdom age. We are beginning to work the work of the kingdom. And so strengthen yourself, strengthen your hands for the work of the kingdom, because we must advance to the mountains and dislodge and overthrow the systems of Babylon down to the cornerstone, down to the foundations. We must, as we seek God, I know we are going to regroup again uh, end of April and May, we must begin to seek God and listen to strategy on even how to set up parallel governance. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yes, because what we know today is founded on Babylonian principle, cornerstone and, and, and foundation stone. So if we have to build on Christ Jesus, that is what will last. Then we must seek the Lord to give us real foundation stones, real cornerstone for education, real foundation for education and for family, and for media, and for governance, and for uh, economies, and for all these mountains. We need to rediscover the foundation stone. <laughs> we cannot go on this one, which was laid on Babylonian principle and expect to change it. I know we've been using the word influence and expect to change it eternally. No. You see, you can only build on foundation. 
We can only build on foundation. If you, if you do not remove the foundation, whatever structure that you build is still premised on that same foundation. And that's why Jesus is the cornerstone and is also foundation stone. Now, this is real hard work and it is costly. I pray that the Lord will help us as we seek the Lord, as we sit and discuss, as we listen to one another, as we share ideas, as we you know, listen and download strategies from the Lord, that the Lord will help us, take us down to the foundation stones of education that will take you to the ancient Greek mythology. They're the ones that gave us, you know, thinking patterns, you know, Greek thinking and so on. We go back to foundation of religion or belief system. We go back to the foundation of family, foundation of governance, foundation of so that First, second uh, Timothy chapter two, verse 19. It tells us the foundation of God stands firm, steadfast, immovable. With this inscription, the foundation of God stands fast. It is steadfast. It is immovable, unshakable. We've just been singing. You're unshakable. You're immovable. You're unchangeable. That is the foundation. And Paul says, it has an inscription on it. It's, the inscription says, the Lord knows those who are his. The next line of the inscription is, let everyone that names the name of the Lord, that is the name of the Lord, the Christ, let them depart from iniquity. In other words, the nations are built on the iniquity patterns of Babylon. So God wants us to build, to depart from that iniquity and cling to the purity of the foundation, which is Christ. And thereafter, we build again. Thereafter, we build again. So let us give thanks to God. He has, in an appointed season, began to wake us up, began to open our eyes, began to stir us up. He puts little impression in an individual, and the thing just goes wild. It is because it is season. Let us give thanks to God for this change of season and the times he has brought us into when his intention is for us to see the kingdom of God manifested, not just manifested, but established in our nation. Can we give thanks together? And then I'll ask um, Phoebe to take over from there. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise thank for you, the seasons and the times that you brought us into. And Lord, by your mercy, you have called us to be like Ishaq, the sons of Ishaq. Then those of us who were us, but you have asked us. You have blown your trumpet. You have sounded the trumpet with us. You have blown the trumpet with us. Tell us a quick Taking personal responsibility and responsibilities that you will have to come 
because you have seen from the book of Revelation this ministry of Babylon, the Hallow, the mother of all. She has a in a handful of the blood of the Lord of Jesus Christ that we will count the cost and we begin to put a mental foundation when we begin to touch religious foundations, begin to touch education foundations, begin to touch uh, economic foundations. I, 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 I counted all God those who have resisted and rejected and refused to Jesus go by the stars of by the ways of the Lord. 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 I pray that you help yes. us, oh God, oh Lord. Yes. 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 by the guidance of the Holy Spirit Lord. to mm. establish new foundations yes, which is Lord. premised on Christ Jesus wow. foundations that are not built yeah, on yeah, iniquity yeah, yeah, yeah. in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank, thank you, our Father, Lord. bless you. We honor yes, you, Lord. our God. Yes. We honor you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 TV, please take over. Thank you so much. We continue in the same spirit. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Nero said at the beginning that the first Adam sold or gave away the earth or the world to the devil, but the second Adam resisted him. In Psalm 115, 16, if you could display it, um, it shows that we have, God gave us the earth right from the very beginning. So now we need for him to come and do the human mountain. We have to give him permission. Uh, Psalm 116, 15, verse 16. Um, he says, sorry, 115, 16. Um, oh, it says that the earth. God has given the earth to man. Is it? I see something different. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. I couldn't see the letters are small. The word of God says the heavens are the heavens of, of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. He gave us this earth. So we are going to ask him to come you're going to use your mountain and ask him to come and lay a new foundation. We dealt with Isaiah 28, where he says he's laying a new foundation, but he needs you to give him permission for you to come on your mountain and do it. So in a one minute, give God permission to change that mountain, which you want, where you see there is a lot of need, and you want him to come and change and, and lay a new foundation according to Isaiah 28, 16 and 17. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we invite you in our land. We invite you in our nation. Because you said that the heavens belong to you and the earth. Jesus, 
Revelation five from verse nine, dealing with uh, they sang a new song. They sang a new song. You are welcome to take the scroll and break open its seals. Let us ask God to break, to um, let us ask Jesus actually to break the seals on the seven mountains. There are so many things, even you as an individual, you have desired to do on those mountains, on each of those mountains, but there are still which are broken. He was the only one found worthy to break those seals. Let's go ahead and desperately ask him to open the seals on each and every, each of these seven mountains. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, unmute and pray. Lord, we ask you that you break the seals, break the seals of the the <laughs> let us unseat this prostitute who is sitting on these seven mountains. Let us go ahead in one minute. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you so much and use the power you have given us as we now approach the seven mountains. The nations, the ancestors, the ancestors, the ancestors, the ancestors, the ancestors, the the 
encouragement to listen and download from the Lord. We that we as we we now we climb these mountains. We have to listen from God. We have to keep ourselves in prayer and download for new strategies how we are going to unseat this woman. Uh, yes. In the morning when we're on the mountain of economy, one of the, 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 the key things on that mountain, you must hear, hear, hear. If you're going to do business, you must hear. So yes. it is being re-echoed here. Now you are going to pray for a new hearing, a new special hearing on the mountain where you are so that you can execute judgment and, uh, and, and, and then bring restitution. Can you pray for yourself and all those people God is calling on the mountains, various mountains, to be people who will be in the word to pray and to listen so that they may be able to get the new strategies. Like Moses was on the mountain of the Lord, he could hear and implement. Let us mm. pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we sharpen our hearing, sharpen our understanding of the word, sharpen our interpretation of the word, sharpen us that we may be able to hear the word, we ask for new strategies. We are muted, Hasta Anthony can unmute. Maybe you're unmuted. I asked Pastor Anthony to give a concluding prayer and um, the announcements, the key announcements. Okay, I think I'll start with announcements. Thank you. Uh, bear with my background. A little noisy. I guess you can hear me. <clears throat> Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. For yeah, for making time, uh, this lunch time to pray through the mountains. I think the burden um, has, has really now is taking shape. Uh, each one of us, we know we have um, a, a lot to carry. Uh, no one is 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 exempted. No, no, not one. Uh, but but now we should know. I think one of the things we're going to do. Uh, every third day, we'll just highlight on how to engage these mountains. Uh, it's something that I will talk with uh, 
leadership uh, and the mountain uh, leaders to see that every Thursday we can just give a highlight of, of how to engage in the mountains or even give some uh, stories of how that has been done. Um, thank you for your support to the ministry. Uh, we really indeed need this support every time. Uh, there's quite some work to do. And uh, as you may know now that we totally depend on uh, uh, your, your generosity, much as we are engaging in other activities to see that there's sustainability. So we thank you for your daily regular support. Uh, the platforms are sc screen shared, either um, a bank, when you walk in the bank and make that payment through a check or a deposit slip, all using mo mo mobile money platforms shared there. Uh, or a, mem a memo code for those MTN subscribers, which is 151275. A memo code is free of uh, transactions on a sender's part. So it is very, very flexible for those who know how to, to use it. Um, we, we are also, in, in, I think, in the last, last arrangements to have a hybrid of our prayer on Thursdays and certainly other days. So we would uh, uh, ask you to continue to pray with us. We have some stakeholders that are still finalizing the last arrangements. We are on their tabs inquiring of when that would happen. So I guess it's now entirely on them to tell us that this day, this month, you begin. We thought by this month we should not have started, but I was still given a notice that uh, they're still doing some final consultations. Yes, um, uh, this Sunday will be the get for the full moon of, of Ada, which coincides with uh, the um, Feast of Purim, or which we commonly know now, we know as the Esther Fast. Not necessarily the Feast of Esther, but the Esther Fast. But it's called the Feast of Purim. I would invite us to, uh, to participate. Uh, please prepare. We'll just do a, a simple write-up prior to the day. But we intend to have every single day from Sunday to Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday will be seventh. So Sunday fifth, Monday sixth, and Tuesday seventh, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. We will convene uh, virtually here. Uh, if possible, um, if we would have moved then, but virtually, especially, so that we, we, we understand what the feast is about much, but also we personally, individually participate. So if you've been fasting, uh, great, that's another way to increase uh, or um, have another perspective. But if you've not, uh, this is a very important get where, where who those who believe uh, turning points in their lives or turning around situations. It's a very, very wonderful get. It's called Feast of Purim or the Esther Fast uh, from the 5th to the 7th of March, 2027. <laughs> okay, I'm going right far ahead. Okay, so that would be actually the, on, on, the, on that very night of Sunday night, I think Sunday night, I think it's Sunday night or Monday night, and just to be sure, we'll have our, our season overnight, the full moon as well. Right, I think those are pretty much the announcements. Yes, we have the Africa House of Prayer happening on the 20th to the 23rd of March. Uh, please get in touch with Auntie Speciosa for any details and how you can participate and how you can be involved. It's happening uh, 20th to 23rd of March, 2023. Usually it's the, the gate of the Avano Equinox. All right, for any other information, please don't hesitate to be in touch with us, any of us from the Secretariat. I'll now pray. Father, we give you thanks for this wonderful time that we have had today uh, on the 2nd of March, which is the 9th of Ada. Lord, we thank you for the revelations that you bring to the front. Even as we engage, like you told us to occupy till you come. So occupation means that we are going to dedicate our mind, 
our soul, our heart, our strength to do the work and assignment that you, you expect us to do. And you have even made it lighter by giving us these revelations, but also more importantly, that you are carrying this yoke with us. If you have commanded us, you have told us that you will be with us. So we thank you for giving us this opportunity. And Lord, we pray that as we look forward to engaging in these mountains, we are going to be um, successful in everything that you are going to make possible. So we pray as individuals, all of us, to know our part, to know our role, and to, 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 to walk in this journey, knowing that you are at the front, leading all the way. We are enlisted soldiers behind you, Jesus, as our commander. So we pray that we do the discipline that soldiers and troops ought to do. We commend the next weeks in your hands as we prepare to engage these mountains. We know that you will make it possible because we fight from a point of victory. Thank you, Jesus. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. And amen. If you can mm -hmm. unmute and share the words of the grace. Glory to God.